Hey there, boppers, and hello, goblins. Or if I were to speak in the native goblin tongue, I would say, <laughs> Hey there, glass and boppers, and hello, goblins. I want to say thank you so much for making TYSO the number one podcast among 18 to 27-year-olds on the West Coast. And, and for 19 through 34-year-olds in Utah. Tyso has been growing and been doing well, and I appreciate you for that. I got a couple guest appearances coming up soon. I just did Burt Kreischer's BurtCast, and I'll also be on FaceTime with my girlfriend. So feel free to tune in to either one of those in the next couple of weeks. And speaking of my girlfriend, we give Betty a call. Thomas is in the clairvoyant game, and he does readings for people. And Thomas gives her a reading. Some surprise guests come up. I will uh, give you a hint. It rhymes with her bed manned ma. And we're going to get into it, but I do want to bring up Patreon because I have been putting a lot of time into Patreon recently, not just with extra content, but also in ways to reach out to you guys. Uh, oh, speaking of reaching out to me, guys. Postmates. Not just doing live Q&As, but I also have started this Discord community, which is awesome, which I'm not going to get too into right now, but feel free to send me a message. But we've been doing chats and, and, and group Zooms, and when Betty and my mom first met, it, they hit it off really well, and I said, hold on, let's do it on a podcast. I wasn't sure if I was ever going to post it, but it ended up being a very good episode, and it was right when they first met, the three of us, and I'm going to put it up on Patreon. So go ahead, patreon.com slash take your shoes off. I also have the link in the bio. And we're going to get started, but before we do, I'd like to give a few shout outs. Joe DeLeo. Let me see if I'm saying this right. I apologize if I am pronouncing this wrong. DW, Louis Alicia, which I'm sure I'm saying right. Chase Leopard. And Tyler Harrington, parentheses TJ. You sure that's not parentheses BJ for blowjob? Or Broken Jaw? Or Billy Jean? Or Butt Jam? Glass been bopped. Click the subscribe. I know nobody wants to hear that. I know if you're going to subscribe, you're going to subscribe on your own. But what am I going to do? Sit here and not tell you to push? It helps me out. And I put a lot of time into this. And while you're at it, hit the bell. Leave a comment. Talk about how cool my relationship is with Betty. Talk about you want to sign up for Patreon and see the podcast with my mom and Betty. Fuck. 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 I guess all I could say from here is, and correct me if I'm wrong, I guess all I could say from here is, and stop me if you have heard this, but scoot do, bubbity blue. Scoot do, bubbity blue. Scoot do, oh yeah. Welcome to Take Your Shoes Off Podcast with Rick Glassman. I'm Rick Glassman. And today's guest is Thomas Dale. You may know Thomas from such things as Take Your Shoes Off podcast with Rick Glassman, his first appearance, or other stuff that he's done. But I know Thomas as a friend, as a gay friend who I went to Alaska with once to do some stand-up comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Thomas Dale. Hello? Hi, Thomas. Oh, there, there he is. So my camera is, per I got the perfect view right now. I wish I would have realized before what to do. Thomas, hold on. Hello? Say something? I'm here, I, I, I'm clear on my side. Great, same. Yeah, my side, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Hold on, I just. Could you, uh, I'm trying this new program. Uh, it's called Squadcast. I found out about it through Mark Marin and Zoom doesn't allow, Zoom has a quite a bit of lag, and I wanted to test this. I hear the lag's not as bad. So to test it, I'm going to ask you a simple math question and answer it as fast as you can so I could see the lag, okay? Okay, cool. Two plus two. 75. Okay, that, there's definitely a lag. Yeah, because you would have laughed way sooner. <laughs> 75. <laughs> well, okay, so far, it, actually, your lips just aligned with what you said. Speak again. Hello, my name is Rick, and I'm curious about the lag. I side, the lips were matching with your sound. So look at me right now. 
When I ask you a question, are you going to be able to... It's getting to me in real time. You're not understanding what I'm saying. I'm saying, is there a lag between when I say it and, and, and how it looks? For example, we know each other so well that we could finish each other's sentences. You would have right. been able to do it, you know? Yes, and I, I said right as soon as sentences was over. Okay, Thomas, say the word sentences with me. We're so in touch that we could finish each other's sentences. Sentences. <laughs> yeah, we got to go to Zoom. All right, if this doesn't work, let's head on over to Zoom. Zoom. Okay, we'll be right back. Uh, Thomas, you can hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you great. You hear me? Yeah, question. The, the video that you were recording on your phone, you kept it going, right? I kept it going, but then I shut it off. There's still a lag? A horrible lag. I, I finish my sentence and you don't start talking for like three seconds. Well, because I'm, oh, okay. So like, I'm, I just started talking right as you finished speaking. So did no. that, did that, was you that started talking like right as thing? you heard me finish speaking, not when I did it. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So listen, you know what? It's all about adjusting, Rick. This is what this quarantine is teaching people. A lot of people, the ones that are out with the guns and they have to go to the beach and they have to be here and there, they don't know how to adjust. They're, it's a weakness, okay? So yes, there's a lag. So now you know there's a lag and then you will answer after you see it because guess what? The video and the sound is clear and matching. That's all that matters. So just understand, it's a lag. That's what happens. There's a lag. Yeah, I guess you're right. Things, oh, things will be authentic. Not the, that bad of a lag. You'll adjust. <laughs> All right, here we are now on Zoom where there's just as bad Rick of a loves, lag. Rick loves a snap. Yeah. <laughs> he loves a snap. Oh, look who it is. <laughs> look who it is, Rick. Hi, Truth. <laughs> he was not invited last time. No, he wasn't invited the first time. When you said you were bringing Truth over, I thought you meant honesty. It turned out you were bringing a, an animal into this house, not to mention the dog. Well, you know what? <laughs> Little know that you are, you know, truth was all over the internet. Theo Vaughn was posting about him. I was posting. Delia was posting. Everyone was posting about truth. Wow. And you, I come to you, I say I'm bringing truth, and he acts like it isn't big news. That is very cool that you got those big wigs to to, to showcase your dog. <laughs> <laughs> My point is what I'm saying is that it was all over the internet, okay? This podcast is brought to you by our sponsor, Thomas Dale. Do you want to know that you're friends with Chris D'Elia and uh, Theo Vaughn? It's easy. Just talk about your dog and make it seem like an accident. <laughs> we'll be back in about four seconds when the lag is done. Two, three, four. Oh, my on with this lag. If I have to hear about this lag the whole time, I already have, I've had a very busy day. I understand. I'm well, the only one. I don't know. I'm just... Go ahead. No, you'll have to keep talking through it. We can't, we can't, when there's a lag like this, we can't have these pleasantries of, oh, oh, please. What were you saying? Fucking barrel through it, dude. Right, and, right, right. And, and we'll have okay. to mix the volume. Right. The loudest one wins, you know? All right. That's fine. I'm on board. Listen, I'm good at barreling through. You know that. I mean, me and you, that's all our conversations are of barreling through. Now, Thomas, is it tough for you growing up the way you did for everyone to keep talking about how much of a lag you are? <laughs> they used to write lag on my locker. <laughs> they used to write Thomas does a lag. Yep. I'm a so big lag, a big old lag. Did you get made fun of for being <laughs> gay in high school? Yes. Well, because I always had a girlfriend, so they were very like, you know, the boys, they were jealous. So they would have to knock me down, but they didn't realize the more you knock me down, the more I get up. Okay. Well, sure. So you, you can't get up by the falling. end by 12th grade. Barrel, exactly baby. right. There barrel, is no getting up. Barrel. Without the fall. You know, you need the fall, you know? Yes. Barrel through. How? So <laughs> wait a minute. You're gay. I was homecoming king by 12th grade. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move we got so much to talk about okay so we, thomas you know, thomas go. thomas you have uh you are a comedian and you are also a podcaster now but before this quarantine mm -hmm. happened i know that you were getting into a new practice 
Um, I say yeah. that because this yes. isn't just, oh, now I'm home. I need to look for something to do. This is something that you have, it's been part of you no. since you were a child. And give me a little briefing on what that yes. is, would you? Yes. But do it while you're standing on your hands. No, this, <laughs> hold on. Um, when I was a little kid in the nineties, I, well, teenager, like early, like late 12, like 12 to 13, 14, I used to get these visions of the future of the country of like burning fires and civil war and the government falling. I saw like the, you know, battles on our land. And I used to tell this to my friends when we would hang out, we were like hanging out, smoking weed, just talking. And they were like, all right, just lay off the weed. And I was like, no, I get, I just see this. Like the handmaid's so tale. It always carried on. I, I guess I never really watched that show because it's not really my story. So um, I, I realized <laughs> and I was like, the leg, I'm like waiting for the leg. That's laugh. what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Imagine, imagine telling a joke and having to, did this land, how do you ride a wave if you have to keep waiting know, for it? I know, I know. It's all right. We got this. Well. <laughs> So let me tell my story. Maybe we'll do long monologues. That might work, right? Okay. So I've carried yes. this with me my whole life. I always had, I always had visions and, and feelings, and I just I was good socially. So I figured ah, I just have instincts. I'm just instinctual. I'm good with people. And as time went on, I would keep touting the story. I would always tell people I'm one of the leaders of the new world. Okay. I said there's a new world coming. It's a new way of thinking. This was before all the 2012 stuff. Was this before this was Bitcoin? Before all the Abraham Hicks and the huh? Was this before Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah way before Bitcoin. Is Bitcoin even a thing anymore? It's like yeah, uh, way before Bitcoin. Bitcoin had a moment. No, I've been talking about this for 25 years. Okay, but I just want you to know that we this podcast is brought to you by the 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 the, the Coin Bros. Um, and this is a uh, oh I I Bitcoin is one of the most uh, progressive <laughs> situations that we have going on right now. Thank you. I love Bitcoin. Okay, so <laughs> so I've been carrying this story with me forever, and I've been telling my friends every new group of friends that I met because I've always met new people in new environments, new 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 seasons. I would always tell the story. I probably told you, Rick. I'm sure I'm sure like in Alaska when we had all those days together it came up somehow about the new world and the 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 destruction of our of our world and our country especially. So people never really believed me. They never really understood. Um I was been doing comedy for 14 years. I started to really get over the business. It's not meshing with me vibrationally. I've been killing it doing everything I have to do, but I was never getting to that point, never getting my my pop. And I realized the universe was protecting me because I have a gift. I can read. I can feel your truth. I can see your 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 future. I can see the things, but also future is very, very, very not written in stone. So I see possibilities. Mm. People who passed away started coming to me. So I started to talk to spirits and I stopped doing comedy. Thomas, what's the difference between passing away and dying? Passing. Well, because there's no such thing as dying. Energy doesn't die. The word die means to end, to be kaput, to be no more. You think I didn't understand Energy, what you meant by end? So you added kaput, and then just in case, a third option of no more. Thank you. I needed to give you a little more, yeah, a little more Jewishness. You know? I always thought that <laughs> pass away was just a kinder way of saying it. Kind of like getting fired is dying. Passing away is getting laid off. No. Nah. No, I mean, yes, La being laid off is a nicer way. But also, yes, when you fire someone, you're angry at them. You're fired. We're done. But if I like you, but we just can't use you around here and we have to cut costs, I have to lay you off. Right. So, yes, dying, cars die. Right. It's like uh, if you want to hang up the phone with somebody and you want to say, I want to go, it's like, whoa, take it easy. But yeah. if you want to be kind, you say, you know what? I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I'm going to yes. let you pass away. That's exactly now. what it is. You're going to pass away. But, like when you're no, 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 up no, no, no. But no, it's, it's cars die, human spirits pass on. They, and, okay? Yes. They pass away from this life. They pass on. And they move on to another reincarnation. life. It doesn't right. end. It, doesn't, it goes on to another life. It goes, well, it goes into transition and then it goes on. It, it, if it decides to come back, should it if choose. that energy, we're all from a light. 
And people call the light God. They call it God, but right. we're from a light. And now, now when you, you say know, a light, so that this... light is what we are. We're just energy. So uh, light, literally a photon, like energy from a photon. Literally. Sometimes it, it develops a yes. consciousness. Yeah. It can be measured. Um, well, no, it develops. And if it, yeah. if it chooses not to come back, where does it go? It stays in the universe as part. That's why we're all connected. Uh, energy can be measured as well. Right. We already know that scientifically. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. So uh, energy carries memories. It has memory. It's like how your certain plants have like a memory or like like even sheep. Sheep have memory, right? I don't know. I don't know about sheep. I just know that. Well, the reason I bring that up is energy has memory. The reason I bring that up is because um, my girlfriend, whom which we're going to get on the phone shortly, you're going to do a reading for her. Her family is in Australia and they often travel in New Zealand. And as uh, Thomas, I don't have to tell you, New Zealand is known for its its strong, vibrant, beautiful, rich wool. And speaking of which, I would like to, for a moment, acknowledge Marshall Rug Gallery, the finest hand-woven, hand-knotted rugs you will find from across the globe. Whether you're looking for a New Zealand wool, you're looking for a silk, perhaps you want something synthetic. It doesn't matter. We have it. This podcast is not only brought to you by the Coin Bros, we're also brought to you by Marshall Rug Gallery. We'll be right back. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. I love rugs. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Thanks. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so I want to I want to give uh, I want to get Betty on the phone and give a call. So, give us a quick little heads up of what this is that you're going to be doing and mm-hmm. and and your your process, what it is you're feeling because I know you told me that, you know, sometimes you're you're going to be thinking, your head's going to be down, things are being brought to you. Sometimes yeah. you have to interpret the things that are brought to you. So, what is this process yeah. that we're about to yeah. see? Tell us yeah. the behind the scenes. Yeah, I yeah, I'm going to do that. Can I finish that story that I was just telling you though before? I would like to finish my origin story. Yes. Okay. So I was done. I've been done with this business, with the, the entertainment business, with all the BS and the, and the kiss and the people kissing up and the phony and all that, the bookers and this and that. I've been done with it. Like, I just was like, I don't, it's not matching up with my spirit. I don't care that I'm a beast as a comic. I don't care that I kill on stage. I can't do this game anymore. So I left my agency. I took a huge pay cut. That's all my money. I stopped doing spots around town and I started Ubering. In my Uber, I started having strangers in my car and I started getting visions and messages and I started doing it to them in the back seat. I just started giving them readings and nailing it. I mean, I had people in my car crying in tears, hugging me, thanking me, all this stuff. So I said to myself, I mean, if I'm doing this in a friggin' Uber, I have to escalate this a little more. I have to put this on scale. I can't just be some cool Uber driver who's got a magical gift. So I started practicing at the dog park, like an open mic. I was like, let me hone my craft. I'm not going to just charge people when I don't know what I'm doing. Let me practice. So I started doing it for free at my, at the dog park with my friends, 100% of the time. Boom, boom, boom. This is like the gym. Yes, exactly. It's like open mics. It's like the gym. I have to work. Yes, exactly. Let me know what I'm doing first. Boom, boom, boom. Killing it. What's this necklace about? Who's your, who's your dad? Why do you die? All this shit. After a while, I was like, I'm going to start building a business. So I started getting clients that would come to my house. I had two clients that fired their therapist and started coming to me every two weeks. Do you ever worry about people coming to your house that you don't know and seeing where you live? And is that something because that's something that would bother me? Like, I don't want strangers coming over and me asking where your necklace is. You don't care. Not me. No, I mean... I've lived, you know, when I was younger, in my younger days, I used to get on Craigslist and I used to do this scene where I would pretend my door was unlocked and I was jerking off and just couldn't catch me. And I would have like straight, I love straight boys. I know. So they would come, come in and we would just do a little thing, ba ba ba, And they left. I said, don't talk to me. Don't say a word. Just come in. I remember when I was on Chelsea lately, Chelsea said on the round table once, she's like, you let strange men come in your house and jerk off with you. You're going to get killed one day. On TV, she said that. Okay? So I have no fear about that. Now, if, if you were to do that today, would you allow them to come over, jerk you off, and then would you give them a little bit of a reading? <laughs> 
No, because my fantasy when it's about sexuality is they don't talk to me. I don't want conversation. It kills the whole thing for me. So anyway, that's just a side note. Just some that's in my past. That was in my 30s. I mean my 20s. So now I've grown up. I'm an adult. I've learned this gift used to I used to hate knowing what everyone was thinking. I used to I don't like going into a room and knowing how to match their energy because I'm I'm being them basically. I can connect my energy to your energy and I start to see through your mind. And it started happening so I would get these clients, I would and the um, oh the work that we do, I would get people to, I would go to their childhood and I would pinpoint moments that the, the thing happened that fucked them, that carried on with their life and we would fix it. I would get goosebumps. Let me tell you, I've performed for 10,000 people in a stadium and I feel more joy doing a one-on-one than I've done, than I have felt with that. That was adrenaline. This is spirit, what I feel now. Mm. So now this has become my life's work. So then the quarantine happened I was taping this Netflix thing the week of the quarantine. That's done. That's over. It's not happening. But that week, that was my last straw that made me realize I got to change my career. This is the universe telling me everything I've ever done. Something just happens for some reason that goes wrong. This is it. And then I start, I hit the quarantine. I said, I feel bad asking people for money during this time. So I'm not going to do that. But then I said, you know what? Fuck it. 20 bucks, 20 minutes. Now it's 25 for 20 minutes. But in the beginning, it was $20. I put a video out. And they came in. I was booked up for three weeks. I've been booked all of April. And now I'm taking May dates. So that's my story. So now I'm doing it. And I've been doing FaceTime things. <gasps> I love helping people. I really do. I love helping them. And the connection is so beautiful. Yeah, you've always been very connected and spiritual. Uh, I don't remember you talking yes. about seeing your version of the world, you know, colliding and everything in Alaska, but I do oh, remember okay. just you connecting with energies a lot with, with me especially because we were together, but just you what you see in other people, and, and it was a big part of you yeah. as a performer That's as well. So I do see that. I, I would like to say, more importantly, Marshall Rug Gallery doesn't just have fine wool and synthetics. They also do, they also do carpets. So it's flooring. It's not mm -hmm. just rugs. Mm -hmm. A lot of the cowards out mm -hmm. there on the internet mm -hmm. think, who cares? I could get rugs anywhere. Tile? Could you get tile anywhere? Could you nope. get hardwood anywhere? Nope. Could you get anything from a Karistan all the way to a Nuristan, whether you want New Zealand wool or if you want alpaca wool? I only did that because I was looking for the A and the Z. I don't know if that's like a far range. But why don't we get your girlfriend on the phone? Let me show you what I do. Great. Okay. I know that, you know, it might be a little difficult with you to sit and listen, but we'll work it. We'll, we'll get the best reading that we can in this environment. Just for those of you at home and not for those of you who are sitting on the chair. Hey guys, Thomas and Betty have never met. We are watching the meetings of them. So please enjoy the readings of Thomas Dale. And now uh, I think uh, if to, to transition into that, I may want to put in some like yeah. kind of music. So I'm not sure what music to yeah. put in, but in case I don't find any, I'll make some real quick. Well, you know it when we read our spirits. We come together to learn our souls. Whether it's light or if it's in dark, we oh, I hear you now. <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm, <clears throat> okay. I'm very Italian when it comes to technology. Like, <laughs> Island, like me and my dad break everything. <laughs> Doing well so far, man. What did you say? Oh, fucking Zoom. This uh, this reading should be brought to you by like Skype because of how bad Zoom is. <laughs> wait hold on ricky we'll figure it out don't worry hold on speak and pause do you hear replay like as in you have to speak <laughs> also before we get started thomas you let me know because yeah. i have an idea of how i could put us in the best position for this okay perfect i like all your ideas you know that i trust you hold on so i'm just setting up my thing here don't mind hold on what are you drinking ricky uh, I, that's I, my, oh, I brewed some coffee that your mom uh, gave me uh, with some oat milk. Oh, it looks like, yeah, it looks weak. 
Looks like Wait, are you, you're Australian or New Zealand? What is that? Z- New Zealand or Australian? My parents live in Australia, but I'm I live in London. My dad's English. My mom's Eastern European. Okay, so I'm all set up here. All right, so let me let me um, Thomas. Uh, Betty, I'm going to do a quick little reading on Thomas, but this is less spiritual and more because I know him. Thomas shines bright when he shines, but otherwise it's a darkness that we do not want to yeah. see. So, <laughs> in, uh, And Thomas shines his brightest when he is, like all of us, his brightest. So yes. uh, Thomas, I think it may benefit you in your confidence and your understanding and your just your momentum to know that Betty and I, not, excuse me, obviously me, but Betty also already knows you. She's seen the episode. She's heard the stories, loves. Okay. okay? So Thank just you, know babe. you're, you're, if you're coming in here to impress, you've already lost. <laughs> I'm not coming to impress, sweetheart. You know, I don't come to impress. Okay. Yes. But I do come correct. So while you two are talking, and- um, if there's a moment where I step away, obviously, continue going i will have as you thomas probably already anticipated be going to take a dump you're going to take a dump i may have he's to, going to do poop? i may have to yeah, during this and but just well, keep, i was gonna say also oh you knew your crotch that bulge is distracting me okay i'm still <laughs> yes. you know just because i'm a clairvoyant with spiritual with with gifts doesn't mean that i'm not a man okay i can't see my right, view girl? how do you see. deal with that <laughs> You, you know what though i have noticed when you when i watch your episodes now sometimes you're wearing shorts and it gets so close to revealing yeah. your car. <laughs> this close. sometimes i'm like oh oh and you just just the angle of the camera saves it yeah i'm i'm very i'm Dude. very careful to make people be turned on but not uh pass out oh that was horrible i, th- I had an opportunity of using a joke and i fucked up no wait you should put like a st- Stunt dick in your shorts, <laughs> <laughs> and then when you like lift your leg, just have it like flop out. <laughs> but, but but what would that accomplish instead of having my real penis come out? Right, because then we would just have two penises. That would be probably more distracting. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. We already have two dicks in the room. <laughs> See, Betty? oh no, <laughs> my 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 camera fell. Hold on. All right. All right, Thomas, so this is your show. Please get us started. Yes, or get Betty, Betty started. my love. Yes, let me get Betty here on the screen. So I just have to make sure that the, her screen is the only one that I really, is like I, my I main screen. I think it happens when I talk and not him. Okay, guys, so here's how you can fix difficult. this. You could set yeah, this up. Yeah, show me how. On the right, um, where it shows. Uh, 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 the gallery view? Yeah, do, right. do, do gallery view. And then you will see everybody, but you could keep Perfect. your focus at one person. I'm in. I'm, I'm I'm all set. I'm ready to go. This podcast brought to you by Zoom, kind of. Okay. Ricky, can you do me a favor? Because I'm not going to do this. I'm, I can't use my phone. Can you put a 20 minute timer? Yeah. And would you a want a 20 minute to... session? Um, and so then I 20 minutes the you just, go, and you just stop. I or? want it to go off at 20 minutes, just so I. It's like a, a set. I need to know where I'm at. I, you know. So at 20 minutes, I want it to go off. Great. At five, you want me to give you a light? No. <laughs> oh, honey, I see the light. Trust me, the light is within me. You'll see. I guess I should have already pressed start. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, Betty, um, all right. So what I do is this is the area that I focus on. So I can see that in you. You're in a good shot. It's like a portal for me. I just kind of like meditate into that. I'll, I'm connecting to your energy and I'm able to like become your energy. So I'll see like what's been going on in your mind. Sometimes it's some, as basic as what you saw food-wise or ate or thinking about. And sometimes it's a metaphor for something I'm supposed to tell you. Sometimes people who passed away come to me, but I'm not a medium and I haven't practiced that yet, but it just has been happening. I think they know that I can do this, so they come. But the most thing that I'm going to do is the clairvoyant stuff. So I'm going to connect to your energy. If I say something that doesn't hit right away, let me know so that this way I can like, because I'm just interpreting it with my human mind. Okay, so what's what is something that's different to me might be different to you, and it's the same thing I'm seeing. Okay, so it's really just about me and you being open together, and the more open you are, the I better the. I'm sorry, go. Okay. Yeah, of course, yeah, because this is energy. Energy is real and it's tangible. So we're just connecting right now, and you're listening and hearing me. So that's great. The more open you are, the the better the reading is going to be. Okay, mm-hmm. I've had some people sit there and like I'm like, bitch, I ain't trying to prove to you I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. You want the reading or not? Let me in. All right. 
So we're going to do two deep breaths together, in through the nose and out through the mouth together so that we're on the same wavelength, okay? The first one now through the nose. And then the second one. Right away, I'm being completely honest, I love your energy. It's very open. It's very like, it's soft even. There's like a softness about you, which I love. It's actually very like, it reminds me of like a meadow. Like when I was, in, like right away, I could feel it. I was able to get two deep breaths right away. You're open, you're flowing. So thank you for that. That's beautiful. Okay, so, and when I'm silent, it's just that I'm connecting and trying to like, I have to clear my brain. My dad is always like, that's not hard. All right. All right, so here. Okay, so right away I'm seeing there's like, again, it's basic, but I'm seeing a carrot. There's like a carrot and, um, and a little bunny. So either that means, because I'm getting a spring thing from you. So I feel like it, either it's very literal, like you just had carrots or you were making a salad or anything with a carrot or a bunny. It could be literal or it's a metaphor for something else I'm supposed to talk about. So has there is there anything like that that's that's happened recently? i was weirdly looking at photos of bunnies on instagram yes. <laughs> just before okay. this yes okay so that's then it's just basic and that's the first it's just a layer that i'm peeling off so now i know that that's what that is and i could put that on the shelf so they were adorable what i saw you seeing so yes okay okay there's a little old woman like a little grandma almost right away she comes up I don't know if she's still, is she still alive or did she pass away? Ooh, so one's passed away, mm -hmm. one has not. One, okay. If one looks very European and like dark, she's, is, she's still here. Okay, the one that passed away, is she like a little grandma looking? Does she look mm -hmm. like a little grandma? That's the one, I believe. And, and a lot of times when they show me something right away, like the bunny, that means that I got that answer through a spirit because it was way too easy for me to see that. So that means little grandma's here. And she's like, little grandma, like that's how she feels. Like that's like the vibe, and I'm getting goosebumps. When my hair stick up on my thing here, that means that I'm like saying the right thing. So grandma's here and she's like, no, yes, I'm saying it. So she comes very like, she's gentle too. It's almost like you got your like gentleness and softness from her, like that, that kind of- No, no, she's very Irish and like stern. Right. Okay, but like, she's like, she's petite. She's like, li she reminds yeah, me of like she's little. little. She's little. Did you, did you have a relationship with her when you were growing up? Ish. Okay. She's very the grandma that's up. still alive, though, that grandma, is. Were, are you, like, close? Do you guys have a relationship? We've got, like, a funny relationship. It's all, like, teenage girls. Okay. And the one that died, the one that passed away, hold on. I can't even remember her name, which is really horrible, but she's... Hold on. She actually, the reason why I feel like you got something from her, and this is actually funny, her name might even be, I feel like she had to do with your name. And you might want to ask one of your parents, like ask where your name, do you know where your name came from? My name, oh, this is just going to show how much of an alcoholic my dad is. My name came from a vineyard that he took my mom to. Okay, so yeah, there's something about that connection and that your dad... Is it his mom who passed away? Yeah. There's something about that vineyard that they went to that was connected to your grandmother. Do you hear that noise? Is that noise too much? Who yes. Is that? Yeah. Who's it's my a printer. printer. <laughs> Max. Max. I'm only going to do that because I'm on a call, like a podcast thing. I'm asking, like, honestly, how long is that going to be? Because I'm trying to do this podcast thing they're recording. Could you give me seven minutes? What are they doing? Blowing leaves? Hello? I don't know. Matt. Yo! Bro, can you give me... I'm asking you, what you, what's wrong with you, bro? I'm asking you nicely. Can you give me... He just sits back down. He's like... Anyway. <laughs> Okay, this fucking guy. I've been Come having a thing with him. With your hair all over the yeah. place <laughs> and dirty. I, I know. He's like, this guy. All right. But he stopped, thank God. I didn't have to get crazy on him. 
I was doing a reading the other day and I'm talking to this woman, this woman's, this woman's mother's coming through and I've got to curse this guy out. I'm like, can you give me a second? Hold on, mama. You know, I'm like, shut the fucking down. <laughs> and then I come back. I'm like, oh. it's interesting to see the yeah. point of view of the crazy person thinking that probably the normal person is the crazy one. <laughs> no, bro. He does. He was doing that from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. What is it though? It sounds it's like a he's saw. We live in an apartment building. He has an actual saw that he's sawing like in his on his balcony it's not a house he's on his balcony if we could if we could, dick, if yeah. we could interview we'll, him he would be like i i'm i'm sawing i only have seven hours a day because i'm trying to be respectful of people sleeping in and, and having their evenings and this clairvoyant keeps telling me to shut up because the dead grandma's in the house <laughs> <laughs> just, all right. and the neighbor in the other building is yelling at him too You'll see, I'm putting a video out about, oh no, I did it yesterday. Look on Instagram. It's hilarious. All right. You guys need to start a podcast about your neighbors. Yeah, it's well, the same thing. in the meantime, we, oh we have- Oh my God, yes, I saw that. We have uh, 12 minutes left. No, we're going to reverse the time on that because- All right, what do you want me to set it? Add, it, add five to it? Yes, yeah, just make it a 15, even 15. <sighs> and okay. started. Okay. So yeah, so so that vineyard, by the way, has something has to do is connected with mm -hmm. that grandmother, and there's a and there's a reason why your dad and mom and what, they would always go there. Something your grandmother was connected to that vineyard somehow. Okay, so talk to one of them and ask. I'm curious too now. Okay, because mm -hmm. it has to do with your name. It has to do with like something about you. There, I'm telling. Um, all right, hold on. Oh, it could it be my middle name? What's your middle yeah. name? I don't want to say it on the podcast because I want people to look for me. Oh, okay, remember, so like, yeah, I yeah, no, no. Story about um, my dad changing my middle name to be his sister's name. Mm, and that might be even there's a connection. I'm telling, and yep, I'm telling you that she was trying to explain something to me about that, like something about. Is she angry? No, she was. Okay. Ve she's very like. The reason why I say it, when they come in from the other side, they're not their same self. They have their personality still, but she comes in a little softer. She comes in a little bit more, she comes in a little more humble, um, like more like ready to get like just she's she's more open to receiving than she was in real life. OK, like she's just she's calm, her edge has calmed down a little bit. OK, so she's showing me something about your dad, though, right now. Hold on. Betty, if there's anything that you want to say that you don't want public, I, I'm happy to to bleep anything. Yeah. Also, you already revealed now that your what your middle name is. It's Grandma. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it's so funny. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. So she was trying to say something to me about your dad. Um, Something happened with him in his, where he, hold on, the words I was, I was trying to use these words, he um, never gets his just due, like never gets his, like what he deserves or what he's, do, what he's like owed, like it, like something, and, and there might even be something specific that happened that where he got kind of like, where he got kind of shunned or like shafted, that's the word. Like he got shafted in something, something happened and she's trying and that where he got like screwed and that kind of happens to him. Like, it seems like his thing. It seems like something that, that goes on in his life. Is there, uh, is there something that I'm close to around that air around that with so your dad? I think you are kind of getting it, but it's still in her perspective. So I okay. think they all think my mom leaving my dad was like unfair to him. But right. Like, yes. Yeah. That, that once you say that, and then I hear it and then the goosebumps that, he got, it, they looked at it as, yes, it's from her perspective that she got, he got shafted. He got the short yeah. end of the stick mm -hmm. and that's okay. So that makes sense now. So, and now I'm getting the goosebumps. So she's telling me that so that she's can validate that she's here. Okay. She thinks you're beautiful, by the way. Mm -hmm. There is a baby for you in the future. That's like with her, like a little girl. A baby dies? Mm -hmm. A little girl dies and is with her? Uh, that's funny because I can see a little girl when yes. I think of my kids. And she's because you see her because she's around. She like really, she really is. Well, what does that mean? It's with her. Because it's an energy. So energy, it's I believe in reincarnation and it keeps going and it's endless. So it comes back in different forms. It comes back in different relationships. 
sometimes your father in one in one life was your sister the next life or a best friend even and family in um immediate families tend to stay together in it's just different roles mm. that's why you feel like you like no you just you know when you look in someone's eyes you're like i just feel like i know you your energy it's just energy it just goes in different bodies different experiences you can even have twin flames where my energy and your energy can be the same energy and it disconnects and comes into two different bodies. So That's why sometimes you need doppelganger. Huh? So what does the girl mean? She's a little girl. He wants to know more about the little girl. Uh, the, well, the little girl, yeah. Well, no, the little girl is just her ba- is the baby that comes. Um, I can see it being with you. I could see you guys being together for, I mean, dare I say forever. <laughs> Because I've, I've, I can, I'm able to see that for people. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm focusing back on her. So work-wise, hold on, grandma's. Huh, interesting. So, okay, so she's saying, and it could be just from her perspective, but because I don't know your, what you're doing for work or whatever, but she's saying, don't look at this as shade because I'm sure you're a very hard worker and you're very successful. But she's saying you need to work a little harder. It's not from laziness. It's not from lack of ambition. It's coming from an uninspired place. Is that, am I near something? Yeah, Rick and I literally talked about that this morning where okay. I was like, I just feel like I could be doing more. And mm-hmm. She goes, start with little. Start with little. Okay, now I say that specifically in her words. Start with little, meaning she knows what it's like to have little and make. Did she come from? Was she? Did she come from like not a lot of money? I would say like she had a like. She knows what it's like to make something from little. Yeah, she came from no money. So she's saying to you, start with little, and then it makes big. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna like dissect that. I think she's saying just start. With a small idea, start with, start with simple. There we go. Start with simple, and then it'll start small. Ones. See, your mind, you like to like, you want to see the big event, right? Mm-hmm. Right away, you want to see the big event. But where she's saying, and she's helping me guide you, start little. Bring your perspective down. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like hone in on Start with simple, simple. Not you're not going to have the whole thing first. You got to start little, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. These are my stones, by the way. If you're wondering what they, they, they I used to not be into crystals, and then I got these, and they actually it connects me so hardcore. Who's Harry? Hold on, Harry. Do you know anybody with an H or a Harry or a huh? That kind of a name like ha. Hannah or Harry or something with it's okay if you don't you might not right away something with a Harry or mm. ha yeah it's like a ha name she she laughs a lot <laughs> mm. what was her husband's name um I don't know Patrick sorry I Patrick. do know it's every single person's name in my family okay all right well just keep in mind that ha huh name there's something with a Harry, H-A, Hannah. Oh. Have you ever th- have you ever thought of names for your daughter, like fantasized? Yeah, I've got none of them are H-A names. Though. Right. I've got a list on my phone and they're not. Could it have anything yeah. to do well, with the, the, the royal family leaving each other? Hannah, Hannah might be, I'm telling you, put Hannah on that name, on that list. Something about Hannah. She keeps saying Hannah. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Did you guys have a nickname for her ever? It was Grandma Hannah, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Imagine. I Imagine if her name was Hannah, because I can't remember her name, but I don't think it was. <laughs> right, I don't um, mind. Ma'am? I don't think so. Hannah. All right, so don't worry, we won't harp on it, but Hannah or Mama, if you had a nickname, I don't know. Nana. <laughs> Yeah, I mean Nana. That could, if you did, if that was a, did you ever call no, her Nana? Yeah, no, no, because she's Irish, so she was Nana. Okay. Listen, so, I, I, I have what, to, I have to step in. Not for me, yeah. who is clearly a believer, yeah. believer of Thomas and Betty and all good energies, but for the voice yeah. of the audience watching this right now, if you were going from "huh" to "Harry," but then like, no, it's just the "huh" part to Hannah. Hannah. 
But then it goes, could it possibly be Nana? It seems yeah. like from the hard H to the Nana. I'm just saying, I'm trying to understand what she, what they're saying. I'm speaking to a spirit here. Well, tell her, tell her to work harder. Is it Erna? Was it my mom's name? What's her name? Erna, but everyone Erna. always thinks her name's Anna. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense to me. But now Rick's got me all, all like... I can't have you anything. It, it, the moment I have you so, is the moment you lose yourself. Hold on. You don't have me anything. Relax, okay? Yes. That's the name. <laughs> That's the name. Like, ha I, was, I, was, I was describing it in my head as Hannah. But she was trying to say like Anna, earn that. That's what she's yeah, saying. Yeah, they all and with their Irish accents, they call her Anna. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so that's what I was hearing. So I also think my dad was married to someone called Anna before my mom. <laughs> I mean that name, that that sound was like very strong, and she was saying it to me. Like, she was saying it like I heard it. I mean, out of all the names, I'm not you know Rick. I'm not going to sit here and try to explain myself. That's pretty close. From Hannah to Anna or Anna. <laughs> and Hera, I know from Harry the to accent Hera. too. When they pass away, it's funny because a lot of people with thick accents, when I'm talking to the person, they even say, oh no, nobody could, their accent was so thick. And it still happens in the afterlife. So she was, regardless of Rick, that's, the, that's who she's trying to make me say, okay? Your mother's name. Okay. Now I'm focusing again. Because I didn't realize the peanut gallery was going to be here. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, hold on. All right, let me focus on you. <laughs> Don't worry about the time. I'm going to give you, because I didn't account for up there, you know? Oh, you didn't account <laughs> didn't for account Grandma for, Hannah? No, for you. <laughs> Listen, I'm not meaning to make fun. I just like really like I'm listening. But then when you go from Harry to Anna, I just like, well, let's. Maybe... No, I never said. Ha I said, I said, yeah, I said, who's Harry? Because I was trying to understand what she was saying. Forget it. Forget it. Let's, let's, move, let's move. Let's move forward. Hannah. She kept saying. I kept hearing Hannah. That makes sense now. Now that we got to Betty's mom. I, I absolutely agree. That's probably right. what it is. And the name is Erna. Mm -hmm. But they call it sounded like Anna. But she's trying to tell me something about your mother. First of all, just so you know, Grandma is getting very upset with Rick, okay? She is not, yeah. So if you want to be with her and have a baby with her, then you better, you better not make, bother Miss, Miss, Graham, Miss Nana over here. Mm. Miss Nana Hannah Banana, okay? <laughs> you know, she just came over here and she told me to tell you to stop calling her that. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure if she's if, if if she's saying stop calling her or stop calling her that necessarily, but something something with an H. She's actually laughing now, you stupid That's idiot. That's the How'd H. You get That's that? the H. The Haas. <laughs> Only Rick can get a fucking <laughs> spirit going. Yeah, I'll tell you something. That should be my audience. When I'm when I'm when I'm bombing in front of a crowd with nobody laughing, I should say the spirits are hysterical. <laughs> Killing for spirits. She likes it. <laughs> The name of your special. Oh my god! Ow. All right. And I just do cartoon ghosts, like having the best time and spilling their drinks. <laughs> That's actually really, really funny. <laughs> Killing for spirits, and you just you just have the uh, the whole thing animated. They go boo. <laughs> boo. All right. All right. Well, that is time. Uh, we'll put. put a, we'll go. I'll put another ten minutes on. Five minutes on. Yes, 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 yes. Because I'm trying. I, she's really trying to get me a message through about your mother. So your mother is she dealing with something right now? Specific, like there's something going on with your mom. Like is she still? First of all, she's still alive, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's fine. But there's something going on with her. Like there is like a um. She's there's a health thing happening with her. She's fine. She's not like, there's, but there's something happening that she's struggling with right now. Do you know about that? Yeah, she's got a blood condition. Okay, and she's kind. Of, it makes her tired. It makes her like um, weak and feeling tired. So she's trying to explain to me that she's okay. Like you worry about her. That everyone kind of worries about her. She's fine. She's gonna like get through everything. But she's just struggles. Okay. Mm -hmm. But has that been, does that worry you like stay on your mind where it's like, it's kind of like it, touch and go, like you, you worry that like something can just happen one day and all of a sudden she's just gone? Yeah, because it's more of like a blood clot thing and she right. travels a lot. So yeah. like I, I, I struggle with not worrying about that. 
Right. Okay. So grandma's telling me not to worry. Okay. That she's going to always be fine. It's not like something she's going to die from that. It's something she's just going to struggle with. Okay. And that it just makes her tired and feel weak. And keeping moving is actually helping her. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's a good thing. Okay. And I'm getting the goosebumps again. So we're connecting. So, so I believe, and this is again, just image what I'm seeing and I'm going to try to understand it. She's showing me a bunch of children. So I believe she's showing me you guys when you were younger, because I was connecting with your mom and seeing that. And then I was seeing like a bunch of, do you have, do you have siblings? I feel like I see a bunch. I have a brother and then I've got cousins who are. But you guys all kind of were together as like siblings, kind of like you all were raised in the same environment. Like we were, we would holiday a lot together, but I was the only girl. So it was just all boys. It was a lot of, uh, a lot of action going on when you guys were all together, but your mom, hold on. Your mom wanted to have more another child. I think she. I think she did lose a baby somewhere along the line, but I'm not sure where in the yeah. where it was. Because my brother and I, like, I was conceived like nine months after he was born. Mm-hmm. So it was like very quick. Yeah, I feel like it happened. I feel like they got it was happened, but it wasn't like full. It wasn't like a. It felt like it was one of those that. They're pregnant, but then it's not a baby yet. And then it, they, they lose it like that thing. You know, when some women get pregnant and then like a month later, they lose it like that. It was never really like formed yet. It wasn't like a, it wasn't a traumatic miscarriage is what I'm no, feeling. No, no. Like it was just very like, we want to do it. And then your mom looked at it as like, maybe it was a sign that she's just not supposed to have any more babies. Mm-hmm. But she always kind of carried that with her that she kind of, that she wanted more. It does feel like you're a little bit hard on your mom when it comes to like things like you're a little bit like it feels like there's a piece of you that feels there's something that there's a side of her you don't know. Like there's like it feels like that you have have this thing where there's like a side of her that you don't feel like she ever shows or that you never get to see. There's like it's not that you don't trust her. It's just that you just. You have a thing of me. I feel like maybe you carry that with everybody or, or is it just her? What is that? I think I think that about everyone, but I think with her, she's foreign. So I don't know her in her native mm-hmm. language. And I know right. she's very different. I get to see insights of it yep. every now and then. And I always say to her, like, oh, my God, you in your native tongue and stuff, you're so similar to me. But in when you're not speaking your native mm-hmm. language, in your first it's like language, a whole other person. Like, yeah, you're a different person. Yeah, and that kind of throws you, that kind of, that growing up like that, I think, or not having, you know, like not having that stability kind of like with like just like, a, you know, one way you're either like this or that. It's kind of what's gotten into how you feel about the way you see everyone. Like you almost treat everyone as if they have two different accents. Hmm. <laughs> like that they're going to show you some other European side, you know, like that's how you kind of treat people. And it gets in, it sort of gets in, I think you've worked on it now, like have you grown up, but it kind of gets in your, in the way of your relationships. Like there's like this thing about you that feels like they're going to show you a whole other side of them. Yeah. So I think you've learned to trust more and you've taught yourself to allow yourself to be vulnerable enough to trust more. Sometimes but that comes from, that comes from your mother. What did you say? Well, I, I wanted to. Uh, we, we've gone on for a bit more, but I did want to let you know that that timer had gone off a couple minutes ago. So I wanted to yeah, give I the know. opportunity. Well, I know. Uh, uh, no, we, but I want to get every time. Every time I get in there with her and get a flow and a connection, mm. I have to stop to like come, you know, deal with you. So I, yeah, this is this is my this is so, my curse and my gift. I I bring joy to everybody, yes. but I interrupt um, psychic reading. So I do apologize. Yeah. Yeah. So give me a minute. Okay. Sure. Real quick. What does Betty's grandma think of me now? She's, no, she's, she's getting, I feel like she's getting a little bit irritated. Oh, fuck. Yeah. She's getting a little irritated and they don't get irritated easily in the, on the other side. Oh, seems like they do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. It's funny now because She's now showing me. <laughs> Hold on. Her breasts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I'm going to have a little spirit come up behind Thomas and, and flash these little grandma breasts. <laughs> She's going to start small. <laughs> Go big. I'm not, we're not laughing at you, Grandma, okay? He's it's just, he's silly. I know. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <Squeezing> the, ooh. <laughs> okay hold on stop because she wanted it's funny because what happened was when rick was getting thin grandma was getting like she showed me your ex-boyfriend hold on and she showed so she showed me this guy the guy before rick but the guy before rick he was very very good looking very charming. He had his shit together. Grandma showed me this, and I think she might just be showing me this because she's trying to get back at Rick for being for being silly over there. Okay, but she said sounds she's like you're trying me, to get like, back at me. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> she's telling. I'm not even kidding. She's like play, maybe she's playing with us. Okay. Oh, she has a playful side now. <laughs> yeah, she's well now she's hold on. Well, he has nothing to do with me, but I also did just hear, and it could be the song or something. It sounded like uh grandma said that he also fucked her better than I do. Is that are we getting that? <laughs> well, this boy, he knows he's a, he's he's very handsome, this man, in this guy. He's very he's got a very pretty boy look, like or just very like together, like an actor look, a very actory look. That's the what she's showing me. Don't worry, Rick, you're funny. Oh yes, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm more concerned with where where this may be going, or, or maybe is that girl belonging to her and the ex, and not me. So, let's keep going. Yeah, no, the gr- got main girl now. I think. What'd you, What'd say, you say? He's got a baby. Sorry. Is it a girl? Oh, no, he has a baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He. Well, I was. That was literally the next thing I was going to say to you is that he's already like moved on and lived, done his life, and he's to, he got his thing. So that's not even a thing. Grandma was saying, you, Grandma's like, you let a good one go. That's all she's saying. Okay. Is she still but naked? Rick's a good one. Huh? <laughs> you should have stayed with him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, incidentally, and I don't know if this is irrelevant because we got to earn it, his name was Harry. No, it wasn't. No, no. Just imagine. But it, it's not. I'm past that because I've already found the name. I mean, Erna, ha, Hannah, Erna, like the, the accent was coming in, Hannah. That makes sense. So if I'm hearing Erna it's from a, a, a Irish accent, I'm just using what my Long Island Italian brain knows. Yes. So that's why I tell the person I'm working with, you know, help me as much as you can because I don't know, you know, I don't know exactly what I'm hearing. I'm just hearing what I'm hearing. I yeah, don't that know makes Erna. Sense. I never heard that name. I never heard that name in my actual physical human life. So you have, you can only use the tools you have. Right. So I think that coming up with the sounding of the, what it sounds like is pretty close. Again, I, the only reason I'm even trying to validate is because we are doing a podcast for people who are watching. So I don't want them to think that we don't know what we're doing. You're right. I'm not thinking about that. Um, and I don't know if that's a smart idea or a dumb idea, but what you're saying makes total sense. It's just part of what you learn. It's like working your craft. It's like things. It's like comedians telling us people have been doing it every day for years. Anything about comedy. Yeah. So and if, it's like, no, if my mom walks around L.A. and tells people, hi, my name's Anna, everyone calls her Anna. It makes right, total exactly. sense. Not and, Harry. Anna. I get it. No, but I started with Harry. I started with who's ha- I'm hearing that. What's Harry? I was seeing it as Harry. No, what, I, what is that I, Harry? I, I understand. I was just having fun with with gra- back with grandma because she said that I have a little wiener. So <laughs> no, grandma didn't. We know about we, we saw we already talked about your wiener earlier. Mm-hmm. Not in front of not in front okay, of so. Betty's dead grandma, please. <laughs> <laughs> but grandma knows because I do have to be honest with I, I have to even though jokes aside, because I'm the one living in this room where the spirits come. I need grandma to know that where she's in on it with me. We're making fun of you. That's good. I should I should take a lesson from that and and learn to let more people in on it with me. So that's actually beautiful. There's a saying. <laughs> yeah, that's a great metaphor. Yeah. We're all learning here. That is that's actually very good too. Look at you learning in quarantine. Now on the on the side of the screen, I'm seeing some old man ghost with his wiener out, and now we have two naked ghosts. <laughs> Who is this man? Do you think? Do you see him? <laughs> I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm going back to Betty. So Betty, um, 
let me do a health scan. I do this for everybody. So I'm just going to go th- down, you know, just scan. I don't do like, I don't feel anything bad, but I just see like sensitive areas and something that might be bothering you or, okay. You take care of yourself, which is good. I feel that. I think everybody at home could see that. It's not true because there are girls that, there are some girls that I talked to that are very skinny and not eating properly or mm-hmm. right nutrition. Like you're on top of all that. They don't like glow like Betty does though. You know? Mm-hmm. yeah everything's fine just the i i feel like just like the um you might have like reproductive area is fine and stuff and it's good but you've always i think kind of been worried because so here's the thing you just are it's like a tight it's and this i've read this with another girl before just the area is it might be like it's tight. Like the, the, the cervix is like, does that make sense to you? It's like the cervix side. So having a baby is just going to be a little more like, it's just going to, when you're hat, you might have to like to have a C-section or something because it's just like, um, the area, your area in the reproductive area is just all like together. A lot of it's tight. So weirdly, a chiropractor told me that he's like, you're not going to be able to give birth naturally because your hips have stayed the yes. same. Yes. Like, you're going to have a hard time. Yes. That area I was seeing that, like, it's just all like, very compact okay so that area so that might just be a reason for that it, it it might even be the reason why you just have one the one i just see the one girl because i think after you're going to be like i really don't want to do that again <laughs> um and something about with how you stand is there a way that you stand um do your like legs kind of turn out like is there like a, um something about like the way your legs are positioned yeah, I've got a um, I've got hypermobility. So the, weirdly, the way I stand affects my like joints really badly. Yes, mm-hmm. I have issues with that. Yes, it's all connected to that, I believe, honestly. So I think that that's just that's really one of you, that's your own biggest issue, and it's interesting also because you're you're healthy and you're like you're you're flowing, but like sometimes like blood sugar can actually play a part for you mm-hmm. in the opposite way. Like it, it goes lower. Like sometimes it gets too low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just keep an eye on that. I feel like Rick, I think I've said this to you before. I feel like that's some of my sleep issues, my blood sugar drops. Yes, yes, yes. It is. Um I I I know it. But other than that, those things you're good. Maybe every now and then just you get like a little bit like a headache in the back here, like um, like a little bit of a pain, it feels like up here. That's been happening recently. Rick, remember I've been having like morning headaches, which yeah. is yes. not usual. Mm-hmm. You know where it's coming from and it sounds very basic. It's stress. It's coming from like stress and um, yeah. it's just building up and it's just it's subconscious stress because you don't really tend to acknowledge your stress a lot like you just let it kind of and now there's a lot happening so it's just sitting there so when you're waking up that and possibly a pillow maybe a new pillow you might want to get there's something about your pillow that's like change the pillow but also it's stress it's stress and it's a mixture of both of those okay so that's the health scan there are there any specific questions or anything that you may have had before we started the reading Will I have kids soon mm-hmm. or later? Yeah. This is where I have to separate my mind and my my gift because I know Rick and I know you guys. So it's like I have to separate what I believe his intentions would be mm-hmm. and what the spirits are saying, you know, like what the energy is saying. I'm feeling the energy is telling me a, a year and a half, two years. But then I'm thinking I can't imagine this one having a child in a year and a half, two years, but I'm not connected to his energy right now. So I'm not, I can't, hold on. Yeah, I'm not even going to go there. I tried and I don't even want to touch it. (laughs) Well, I could tell you what I'm thinking. It's a little silly and I don't mean to poke fun, but if there's something wrong with, with Betty's cervix, but sometimes uh, I do. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Well, I said it was tight. Go yeah. Ahead. Well, uh, the challenging, not wrong with it. It's very yeah. natural and a beautiful thing. But mm-hmm. sometimes I do rearrange Betty's organs, and I wonder if that's something <laughs> we should be doing more of. He does sometimes. If honestly, sometimes we've nearly gone to the doctor about it because I'm like I am in so much pain. 
Ricky. <laughs> Ricky. I had sex with Betty last night. Twice. Well, twice yesterday. I got in in the morning. We had morning sex. Well, for me, it was night sex because of the time difference. <laughs> After our, our night sex, the second time, she complained that her insides were hurting. She said that my penis fucked her into and and to maybe uh, bruised her cervix and and hurt her tailbone. She said that I I rearranged her organs and she didn't say it in the type of way where it's like dirty talk. It was more in the type of way like she was complaining, like you f fucked me and ruined me. And I have mixed feelings about this. I I said I'm so sorry. Is there anything can I get you a heating pad? Because what do you do when you fuck a girl and and then she hurts? I did suggest do you want me to have sex with you in the butt and push everything back. <laughs> but you know, you have to make light. And uh, she didn't want that, obviously. But <laughs> but like, I felt bad, I feel bad. And, and this morning, and she woke up and she's like, she's up, she's hurting. And she said, she said she took a poop and that helped. <laughs> There's no way she wants to be talking about this. You know, I, I, what, I, I, I'm, I'm feel bad, but also like, good for me. Good for me. Not good that I hurt her, of course, but she said when she pooped, she felt a little bit better or still hurting, but she's worried that is this now, is she fixed or is the, when the pressure of, uh, of poop in the stomach, is that going to bring it back? So we're going to have to wait and see. And I'll let you guys know next week if my girlfriend taking a shit helps her from getting fucked too hard by my big dick. My name is Rick Glassman. Welcome to Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it, you're small framed in there, you know, and it's really, it's like, I mean, even a baby carrot would hurt you. Mm -hmm. A carrot. Interesting. You know, ah! At the beginning of this, we saw a carrot. <laughs> you know, a baby, a, a rabbit is a sign of fertility it was as more well. Than bunny. A bunny is a sign of fertility. A young bunny, a yeah. baby, a well, carrot. Also, a, no, Ash bet. A bunny is what she was looking at, sweetheart. Okay, let's well. not, don't, don't, yeah, don't take away. I would say a year and a half to two years. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is that is that like a yeah? That makes sense. Yeah. So that's how I'm feeling with that. Oh, um, wow. And Grandma said, "Just keep, just work hard, you know, just for that job thing." Grandma, put your shirt on, sweetheart. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Betty. Um, anything what else? About that travel. Mm -hmm. Okay, is hold on. Is that a big thing in my future, or not so much? Well, to be honest, like, hold on. France just popped up to me. I don't know if France has been like a thing on your mind or a place that you have been wanting to go to. What, what's going on with France? What's that yeah, about? We were talking about, we sent each other a photo. Yeah, we sent each day. other photos of, of, of a place in Paris just the other day. Okay. Yeah. yeah so that's, that's what I was, pop that's, I mean, that came to me. So I do see the a France, a France thing happening sooner than later. I see France like before the child, to be honest. Um, hold on, Grandma's. Home. Now the thing is, when Grandma, when people come through, when before we end, I like to wrap it up because I don't need them lingering in my in, around here. Hold on. Oh my God, Grandma's funny because when I went back over here to her, she's like she's kind of pouting. <laughs> she's like this. She's so irritated. <laughs> She's so irritated. Girl, it has nothing to do with me. It's him. I'm trying. Hold on. Yeah, yeah let her know. And I'm not, I, huh? Yeah, make sure you let grandma know that it's not your fault. Yeah, yeah you know, I, yeah. I'll take care of me, Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hear me. yeah, we could see that. <laughs> well, no, because Grandma came in from the other side, and I got she didn't realize that we got you over there interrupting. Grandma Trina. didn't know. Grandma didn't know that I was on the call. I'm sure she knew. She just didn't realize what you were going to be doing. Yeah, sounds like Grandma. <laughs> You're an idiot, <laughs> Grandma. Hold on. Before you go, is there anything that I can say that you really want to get across? She's showing me the situation again with, because she brought up your dad again. Hold on. She She's going, I want to let that go. So it feels like it's important to her that she gets out to the family 
that whatever that situation was between you and your dad and your mom, she wants to let it go. Like she holds no animosity to the other side. She's saying she just wants it to be go. She wants to let it all go. Okay. Grandma, I got that out for you. Thank you, sweetheart. She said, thank you. She actually wants to, she actually showed, she actually wants me to, for you to give a kiss to your mom from her, even though they had, right. Even though probably it sounds like they had some kind of thing. She yeah. Did, yeah. She's saying, I want give her a kiss for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the dog, is there a dog? Was there, a, and the dog, she said, did she, what, yeah, what was, my mom's who, got a dog who we're like obsessed with. Yes. Yes. And she said, and the dog. And you said you have a brother? Mm-hmm. Well, is there something wrong? What's wrong with him? She goes, he'll be okay. And it's like a mentally or an emotional thing that he go. that's something about him, like that you he'll be okay, she says too. Like another one, she goes, he'll be fine. Yeah, he's a, um, he's, he's doing well, but he's a, um, he's very sensitive. Like emotion, there's something like he's go, always going through something emotionally and she's like, he'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's, you know, just be tender with him, she said. Be tender is the word she used. All right, Grandma. If there were two titles of this reading, I would say it's either Be Tender or Get a New Pillow. <laughs> wait, what's the, wait, so what's the first word? The, uh, the, the, the titles of this would Be Tender or Get a New Pillow. <laughs> get a, what's the pillow? Earlier you said... You my said head was pillow? You said either literally or metaphorically she needs or no, you didn't say that. You said that um that she needs to get a new pillow. Oh, for her neck, for her head, yeah. for the for the pain. Yeah. Yes. I don't know, because when I'm doing that, I'm like channeling. So I just I'm kind of in the moment. I'm not it's not my I'm back here as Thomas. I fucking swear to God this neighbor. Well, you know, he gave you an hour. He gave us an hour. He did, right? Oh, okay. Because yeah, I just asked for 30 minutes. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So there you go. That's the reading. Um, thank you so much. It was, yeah, I, I'm glad we were able to get what we were able to get while we had him over here chiming in, you know. I think that we, um, bye, Grandma, by the way. Just thank you for coming. Whoa, wait, I one sec. It. Before we yeah. go, Grandma just came into my apartment. <laughs> Hold on. What's that? She, yeah, she wanted, rip. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she had something she wanted me to tell you. I don't know if you guys care or not. Uh, you guys could keep going if you want. No, you can. What'd oh, she say, Rick? Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Well, she wanted me to tell you. Live from New York, it's Saturday night. It's Saturday night live. With Fred Emerson. Sunberg. I mean, now, what are you guys gonna go do a podcast now? Uh, actually, we're gonna continue it right now. That was fun. Honestly, she's super, super sweet. I liked her, and she's so pretty. I mean, you really score, baby. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. She's a she's a good one. She's a good one. She had listened to our episodes before we met. Um, Betty and I we FaceTimed for weeks before we ever met because she lives in London and she started watching some of the episodes and really, really liked you. Not that I wasn't planning on having you back, but it was her idea. She said, when we were talking about get, making this happen, she's like, get Thomas on again. And it's like, yeah, I've been meeting to, and we set this up. Um, Betty has been on a few of my podcasts, but Be- Betty's been on a few of the podcasts so far, um, like little guest appearances here and there. But I recorded a podcast uh, when my mom came in town. My mom and Betty met for the first time, and it was just magic, baby. So I actually, we were hanging out. It was an evening when I picked her up from the airport, and I said, I want, uh, we were just kicking it, and I said, guys, I want to end this conversation. Mom, come over tomorrow, and I want you two to meet, and we'll record it on the podcast. I don't know if I'm going to share it or not, but we ended up doing a full podcast of them meeting for the first time, and it's really great. And 
Uh, I'm 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 going to plug my my Patreon now. Uh, I have a lot of exclusive content on there, but yeah. that is going to be a special episode that is exclusive to Patreon. If you want to check that out, go to patreoncom slash take your shoes off. It's a full episode, just like all the other Tysos with video and the editing, and it's a really really good one. So check that out on Patreon. And uh, Thomas, wh- what was it that you were feeling? What was it that when Grandma was in the room? Is it is it something that you feel an actual presence, or is this something that of something is being spoken to you, an energy? Like, does it feel like someone's actually next to you? Yeah. Um, so, in the beginning, when this first started happening, um, it was just images. Like, I remember um, Jesse May. Well, yeah. Well, just, she texted me once about needing to see me, and her father had passed away, like within that year or maybe two years. And I was like, yeah, let's talk. Let's hang up about. And once I got off the phone, I saw a, an older man and he was handing me a teddy bear with a ribbon around it. I'm like, what is this teddy bear? And it had a ribbon. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And it's my imagination that gives me the pictures. And then I'm thinking, I'm like, it's blue or red, the ribbon, but I couldn't figure out the color. So I said, I'll mention it to her when I see her. We didn't get to hang out. So I texted her a month later. I said, hey, this has been on my mind. Let me ask you if this resonates with you. I said, when you texted me, after we got off the phone, I think it was your dad, but an older man came to me and handed me a teddy bear, and it had a ribbon, and I don't remember the color, blue or pink. She go, I go, does that teddy bear, does that anything? She goes, ever since my dad died, I've been sleeping with the teddy bear that he gave me, and it used to have a ribbon on it, and I just can't remember the color. And from those moments on, I was like, okay, I have something here that I should really explore. So yes, now when I'm doing, since the quarantine, I've been doing four readings a day. So it's just like comedy. The more I do it, the better I get. And I've been able to just see someone and this one girl, I go, what's this blue jay? I'm seeing a blue jay. She goes, oh my God, my my husband's dad, he passed away. We always say he comes back as a blue jay. And we even named our son Jay after the blue jay. So it's sometimes as, as, as quick as that. It depends on the spirit, how they are. So when Nana came in, she was coming in, but like she was saying, your girlfriend, she has a thick accent. So I couldn't really understand exactly. It's not, you don't hear shit. I'm not a schizophrenic. You don't hear actual voices. It's images and feelings. So I'm sitting there just trying to understand. So even the word, you know how we all, we hear our own voice in our head. So I'm hearing it through my voice. So if she's saying a word that I don't isn't in my vocabulary, I it's hard for me to decipher what it's saying. So I'm going off of a sound or a feeling or syllables or I'm trying to just decode it. It's like decoding pictures, even the bunny rabbit right away. The- do you ever question what you're hearing? Do you do, do you ever doubt it? Do you ever think to yourself, is this true? I don't mean the, the necessarily the entire gift i'm talking about in a particular moment is there ever a time where as a comedian sometimes you don't feel funny are you ever as this um as this clairvoyant are you ever like i gotta be honest it's just not coming to me right now and i'm not sure if i'm reaching yes yeah uh 100 there are times where i feel like and it's i would say 0.05 percent of the time okay just like my comedy there are times i've felt like i was bombing and I'm like, am I bombing right now? And I'm getting like sweat, like doing the reading. And I'm like, and I'm not a fraud. I'm not a fake. So when I'm like that, I hate that feeling, you know, but it, I can count on one hand how many times that's happened to me. Well, that would be, that would be 10%, not 0.05%. You're saying one out of every 200, but counting on one hand would be one out of every 10. Exactly. And see, and there we go with perspective and working with what you have. Calling all gas stations, 24-hour convenience stores, and smoke shops in the California and Florida area. Right now, times are tough, and we at Tyso are big on not leaving the house, obviously. So this advertisement is to plant a seed for when quarantine is over, and you're interested in making some extra monthly cash with a Coin Bros Bitcoin ATM in your venue. Here's how it works. Hello? Hey, Rick, did you know the Coin Bros will place a stylish, easy-to-use Bitcoin ATM in your venue? And pay you monthly rent to host? Yeah, the Coin Bros literally takes care of everything, and it makes it easy for you to increase foot traffic and earn extra monthly passive income. Doesn't the Coin Bros also reward successful referrals? Yeah. If you connect a location that agrees to host one of your ATMs, you get compensated. 
Visit the coinbros.com and fill out. Hold on, try that again. Visit the coinbros.com and fill out their contact form, or simply call their 24-hour customer service for more details. For more details. All right, yeah. What is that? Why you called? Uh, yeah. All right, back to the podcast. Sounds good. I'm from Long Island. I don't fucking know math. So in order to get my point across, I use what I have. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. A lot of the things sound ignorant. So it's like, yeah, so so you use what you got. So if I don't know what they're saying, I'm using what I got. And then the person, for me, it's not about me proving to the person that I'm real. I know I'm fucking real. I've known things that there's no way I could know. So I know for sure. Like I say to the people, I've turned people away where I'm like, yeah, I don't really do readings for people who are on the fence. It's not my thing. I don't think we're a match Mm -hmm. because I have no desire. I know like I'm living this life. I've known things that there's no way that I would know. So I'm a hundred percent sure. I know that I have this gift. So when I'm not connecting, it's because I'm either distracted or they are closed off and I can't get in. Mm -hmm. I've said to a person, listen, you got to open up a little bit because you're cl- you're making it hard for me. Right. We only got 20 minutes. So if you want a good reading, I need you to stop fighting this. Um, you know, and distractions. Like, I, you know, like when I was doing your girlfriend, like my neighbor was with the fucking saw. Right. And then I got you over in the corner judging because I know you don't believe in it. So I got you over there, you know. So there's a lot going on. But at the same time, at the root, her grandmother's coming through mm-hmm. from another, you know, from another from another plane. So that's the energy I try to focus on. The more I learn how to focus and clear my mind, the better I get. I just am pra- it's a practicing thing. Yeah, so Thomas, uh, this would be so much easier if you were here in the room with me. And, and I don't want to keep harping on this because I can imagine it might be annoying for the audience to be like, yes, we know, but this is what's on my mind and I feel like I need to mention it. So what I'm about to talk to you about Fine. is... Um, is I guess I'm, I'm I'm watching my words because I understand it's important how this is received because I I, I could imagine this. Right. I'm just gonna see what happens and let you decode as you were talking about as you do. So, yeah. First of all, you mentioned a few times both uh, now and during the reading with with Betty how you aren't wanting to sell this truth to anybody you know this is real you don't care about proving it to anybody i i i could relate to that on a personal level with certain things that i have identified with that i catch myself trying to validate it to people and it makes me feel dirty it makes me feel gross like why do i have to prove this to you and what i i realize is a lot of times it's because i may not be as certain now i'm not putting this on you just hear the psychology of this out. I may not be as certain with yeah. certain things. So when people question it, it forces me to do the same, right? So mm-hmm. you're, and this is coming from a place of knowing you for as long as I have with, with, uh, with issues oh, that you yeah. have dealt with that, uh, that, that our relationship has dealt with. And this idea of certainty yeah. is a dangerous place to be because it doesn't give right. room to allow other people's questions. So I just want to acknowledge to you that, one, I don't think this is all hocus pocus mumbo jumbo. I'm not putting this in the book of right. sciences. I, 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 One, I see some entertainment value to it. Two, it offers some perspectives and in diving into this stuff. It's like, oh, that could be. And three, there is yeah. this magical spiritual world that is exciting to get tapped into. And sometimes I'm more willing to be a part of others. It's not that I don't believe you, mm-hmm. but this idea of like, I know I'm right. So if you don't believe it, then fuck off. It's like, well, hold on mm-hmm. a second. You know, I mean, yeah. if if Betty's g- g- dead grandma was in the house, okay, I mean no disrespect, mm-hmm. but if she isn't, is this all for nothing? Like, if she isn't there, you could still be touching on other things, right? Well, of course, listen, of course, I understand. I, I, you're a, wait, are, what is that called again when they have... What's the thing that you are when they Athletic. believe that when you die, it's just black? A- an atheist. Are you Are you an atheist or not? I don't know if you are. I don't know. I, I You know, this is going to sound yeah, very corny, I wanna, but I don't know. Let's get your to... origin story before we – yeah, well, I want – before we get – you know, I always tell people, know where your perspective is coming from. So if you're an atheist and you believe that when you die, nothing happens, then I can't – there's really not much wiggle room. That well, means I have, to, I have to convince you of – 
a whole thing. And girl, I ain't got that kind of energy. There's spirituality <laughs> without necessarily <laughs> having a heaven and a hell. There is this idea of energy no, that no, I don't believe in heaven or hell. I didn't say you Christian. I said, are you an atheist? I, I don't I don't know. I mean, you know, someone who has uh, obsessive okay, compulsive so. disorder, there are these things that come to me that that are, uh, you know, however I define them, a lot of times it causes anxiety of, of things that I feel like I'm being told I need to do or not to do and not on a uh, on like a conscious point of view necessarily, more just on a what I used to think was either necessary or irrational. But you know that this idea of spirituality and, and one thing causes a butterfly effect to other things, and we're all connected in certain ways. I mean, I, I do believe, and I, I don't know how I would define it though. But I am a natural skeptic. Right. But you believe that. Right. And and you believe that when you die, nothing. Ha- that that's it. I don't know. I like. I, I don't know if I believe that. It's okay. Your soul necessarily goes somewhere and you becomes reincarnated, but I do believe that consciousness right. is a is a very specific thing that we designate as part of life but consciousness like does it belong to that person or does that person have that window and there are an unlimited amount of windows i i I don't know all i know is that if i'm looking for the best flooring if i'm looking for someone that could get it to me not just on time with the friendly wait staff with competitive prices and consistency for a family-owned business that has been around for almost 100 years i'm choosing marshall wright gallery So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered. Yeah. So it sounds like to me, it sounds like to me that you are, Mm. that you're kind of, I'm trying to find the right word, don't interrupt me. It sounds like to me that you're, you have an issue with my certainty because you have so much uncertainty. No. So just because I'm certain about, eh, 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 let me finish, let me finish. Just because I'm, I'm only certain about this and don't hold our past with mental, ish, m- mental illness shit that I've dealt with about being certain about certain things, which I probably, which there's some truths to some of my certainties, but there was a person making me extra crazy. So yes, that situation. And also there was other outside influences like med- medications and stuff. Mm. So that era, that time, yes. But I have certainty in this because dude, how come when I was, how would I know how I said things to her about her body that doctors already said to her mm-hmm. and I said it and confirmed it. I don't know her doctors. I don't even know her Instagram handle. So out of all the body parts that I could have said, why did I know something that a doctor already told sure. her? A doctor is science. Thomas, I'm not trying. So I'm not trying. Those to are prove my certainties. Anything. Wait, go ahead. So I'm just saying my certainties come from my experience. Right. It comes from every day talking to people and saying things, dude. That I would. I said to one girl, I was doing the health scan. I said, "Your tooth. There's your something happened with your tooth, and it's going to take a little long to fix it." She goes, "Holy shit! I just cracked my tooth, and because we're in quarantine, it's taking three sessions that I have to go do it to get it fixed, and it just." So things like that. I mean, I could give you a whole list of shit. It's constantly like that. So yes, my certainty comes from a place of experience. So Thomas, um, I'm not trying to prove you wrong by any means. And I'm not speaking of Thomas. It's not. You're just sparking conversation. I'm not talking about Thomas Dale's certainty. I'm talking about certainty in general. Right. And my observation isn't about the patterns of your past from before this and this conversation that we've had. I'm saying that I am seeing you being triggered by saying, I don't care if you believe it. I know. I know. And what I'm saying is. I'm not triggered. Okay. You, no. I'm you know me. I just speak. every. I say, I talk about breakfast and I sound triggered. <laughs> I mean, it's just how I talk. Sure. And yes, and I think I do come a little defensive fr- to you because I know you. So already I'm on defense. Yeah, well, because when I'm watching you give this reading to Betty, there are certain things where I'm like, all right. And then there's certain things I'm like, okay. And do you want to get that? Is that you? No, that's you. Is your phone still recording the video? You want to make sure your phone is still recording? That's why it should be on airplane mode. Yes. You can. I, I, hold on. I had it on off. 
Oh fuck! Now I'm gonna have to sync right, this three times. This still is... recording. Yes. Don't I stop had it. it. On, I don't know why it did that. I had it on off. Don't stop it. Did you stop it? Oh fuck, Thomas! Fuck. If you could see the future, could you see how fucking annoyed I'm gonna be when I have to sync five different files now with different frame rates and different wave file lengths? I don't know what to talk. Yeah. So you started a new video? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I had it off. It was off, and it was. It, and then, and then they called. Who was they? Huh? Who was they? It was my mother. Fuck. So I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we can just take what we have and move on because I, I'm doing a lot to try to get this done with the camera and this and that and that. So I'm trying my best. Yep. Uh, the situation is frustrating. I have no technical experience. Thomas. Yeah, I get it. Um, people are dying. We got it. People are dying, you said? Yeah, it sucks. The whole the whole thing is stressful. Yeah. I just watch these podcasts, and it's just like, this looks and sounds horrible. Everybody has a phone. Do them, Do one step above the minimum effort. And it's like, here I am trying to do this, and it's like, this is why people don't do it. <laughs> it's just like there's always right, exactly, something. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, when it's done, it'll look great. So I mean, what else do you you have nothing else to do, buddy, than to just figure it than to match and do all I got it. Let's move on. Let's continue. Oh, this this conversation we're having here is no good? No, but because it's just gonna, we're both just gonna be irritated. So why bother being irritated? You've made a living off of being irritated. Well, try to change that. You, By the way, did you have donuts today? How did you know that? Because I saw it in your body. I saw, and I wanted to say it to you right no, away. No, I haven't had donuts. I, like, I haven't had donuts in months. I'm gluten free now. Oh, really? So what's the thing with the circle? Is it a bagel? No, a circle. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess it could be like something with a hole. Now, is it a circle? Is it a hole? Is it uh, is it a hole in something? Is it a circle? The, or it looks like a donut. It looks like a donut. I mean, it, it could be symbolic so, for the 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 secu the secular uh, circular uh, like sinking issues no. I'm going to have. You definitely had something going on. Is it a food? You definitely ate something with that looked like a circle or a No, I had... Yeah, it looked like a bagel or a, or a donut, like one of those. The like only, the only uh, thing I ate today were um, rice noodles and fried rice. And I, I had... I put donuts on oh, top, but... I, by I the way, it says Rick G... Is, it says your bandwidth is low. Yeah. It says your band... It says Rick G network bandwidth is low. That's why you're getting lag, by the way. Yeah, it's probably also... It looks like my... Uh, it looks like Zoom is able to read my consciousness. So, so what have you been eating? Nothing with a, a donut hole? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I don't believe you. Why would I lie to you? Because that's all you want to do is just be difficult. This is what I'm talking about. This is why... Oh, this fucking lag, dude. Well, why did I, what was the donut thing? Have you been thinking about them? Have you been craving the donuts? Yes. Have you been wanting one? I've been wanting donuts so much, Thomas. No, but if you have been, then that's what I saw. Who I felt doesn't it from want you when donuts? I was looking at you. Is it a, I don't want donuts. I are you kidding me? Yes, I want donuts. If you've been thinking about what? I yeah. want donuts. I, I've been I saw it. I want ice cream. I want to have sex again. I want uh, I want somebody else to sink my footage. These are the four things I'm always thinking about: having sex with my girlfriend, ice cream, donuts, and other people sinking my footage. Well, that donut popped up. It's either that or you're buying your girlfriend a wedding ring. One or the other. Thinking about donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right about the ring? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I, I've thought about it, but it's not something that's in in the anywhere near the front of my mind at the moment right now i'm i'm more interested in when could i see her again uh-huh 
But let's expand so on the donuts. The uh, what could it be about the donut? Um, yeah. Or the ring. Or the ring. Or a bagel. Or a bagel. Or somebody named Anna. No, it was ha. I kept hearing Hannah, Harry, Hannah. Oh, and it by was the way, Anna, Be- and they call her Anna. Betty, and they said they call her Anna because of the accent. Listen to this. Betty texted me, and uh, her her uh, she spoke with she spoke with uh, um, her family after the call, and her grandma's uh-huh. name, the one with the the ghost breasts, Sarah yes. with an H, <laughs> Sarah backwards. Um, then is ha- is Sahara and and I kept saying I'm not even joking not to be an asshole I kept saying it's a Ara Hara it's a Ara name absolutely Sa- I kept saying do that. you think there's something to it what did did she come in backwards or something or on her head upside down or something like no. that no no she was trying to say the name and she's got a thick act and I couldn't understand it and I clearly was sa- saying I don't see the name clearly but it sounds like Hannah. Anna, Ara. Well, I have a surprise Ara. for I mean, you. That's, th- not every. What? Well, I actually knew that the entire time, and we had the ghost as a setup. The ghost is actually a good friend of mine. Everyone, please welcome Grandma Ghost, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, put a shirt on. What are you doing? Here, 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 here. Put that on. Now, if you like that shirt, you can get a Take Your Shoes Off shirt at rickglassman.com. Use promo code BOOBS for 10% off. But just to be clear, it's with two O's, boobs, not three. B-O-O-B-S. Get yourself a shirt. Get yourself a hat. Get yourself some good merch. That's rickglassman.com. Don't forget to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash take your shoes off, where you can see the episode where Betty and my mom meet for the first time. Thomas. That would have been a good ending, but I didn't finish with you yet. So put that at the end. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm here. Thomas, uh, uh, if you I'm get here. also, I'd like to I'd like to get some some uh, some of my uh, TYSO goblins and glass and boppers involved, guys. F- f- uh, uh, you know what sucks in my head after I said guys, I felt like I have to say and girls, as if girls aren't included. Do you ever do you ever think and bitches? Yeah, guys uh, and bitches. <laughs> And women, leave some comments. Let me know what you what you thought about the reading. Uh, any questions you have, or or open to any questions you may have about how could this be real. We're also up to any any questions or comments you could have of what you connected to it. Also, if you have any questions for Thomas, it might be fun. Thomas, we could. Re- I have to imagine you'd have to connect to their souls. You can't just read comments from strangers, right? No, they need to just come book a reading. I'm very busy with these readings. I'm not going to be just answering people's comments. Yeah, we should get we should pick somebody <laughs> who's a book fan. A reading. We should pick a fan of Tyso to people who who are into this and believe in this. Send an email to take your shoes off podcast at gmail.com and with with a little bit of what you connected to with this and it might be fun if we do a quick maybe could you do a 10 minute reading ever? Yeah. We could we could uh, get a, a a TYSO goblin up here and um uh, that could be fun. Yeah. If you want to book a reading with me, you just reach out to me on Instagram, Thomas Dale five. That's where I, just DM me. Will you or see all Facebook, the DMs or you can email me. What's your email address? Uh, I see all, I, I see every, I'm, yeah, I see everything. What's your email address? Uh, to, it's Thomas Dale five, five at gmail.com. Sorry. She, she was leaving. Say it one more time. Thomas Dale. Dale, T-H-O-M-A-S-D-A-L-E, 55 at gmail.com. And if they want to do a reading with you, what are they going to do? FaceTime, Zoom, Skype? Um, you you call, you book the slot, and then uh, I call you FaceTime. And then we do, we could do it Zoom, FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, I mean, whatever video chat. 25 bucks for 20 minutes? 25 bucks for 20 minutes. Now, if this goes on for the next few years and you start to get even better and you get more clients and you get busier, obviously your rate yeah. is going to go up at the at the high, at, at a higher level. Yes. What what does something like this cost? Yeah. Uh, usually, people charge about one twenty five for how long? For about forty five minutes. Forty five minutes. So it's like going to a spa. So, exactly. I do fifty dollars for forty because I'm still you know I'm still on the path. I'm not too. I'm not like. 
one of the big guys yet. You know, I know my role. I'm featuring. I'm opening at this point. I'm an opener. Right. Now, is that the goal? Is, is it to be uh, uh, known and and successful at as um, it's clairvoyancy, yes. right? You're a clairvoyant. That's the term. Yes. I'm a clairvoyant, Hayoka empath, and a, apparently a medium because they're coming to me very clearly. What's Hayoka? Uh, Hayoka empath. I discovered this on my path of self-realization. Hayoka empath means uh, is one of the higher level empaths. So if you Google Hayoka, H-E-Y-O-K-A, Hayoka empath, the Native Americans actually used to refer to Hayokas as the sacred clown. The Hayoka empath can unveil your truth. I have, and, and my dog's name is Truth, which I named before I heard about the Hayoka empath thing. I've always Small been obsessed world. with the truth and finding the truth. Mm. So Hayokas are, we have the ability to unveil your truth. Right. When I'm talking to people, I see right through them and I see their truth. So I'm able to unveil it for you. I've always felt that about you. Yeah. I've always, when we, when you're going out to eat and you just telling me how I feel and I always, it's always nice to be around because it's this feeling of like, oh, Thomas understands me. And, you know, when you're with somebody yeah. who you feel understands you, it's just, it makes it easier for them to understand you more because you're more open and you're more excited and you're more connected. And that makes, that makes sense. 100%. Yeah. Because I used to use this just socially. I just figured I was good socially. I never thought in a million years that I can be an actual clairvoyant doing it. And now that I'm doing it, like it's just because I'm practicing it. Anything you practice, if you have a talent, you just make it better. So, tell so us. that's why everyone loves to be with Thomas. We all, because it's like, I know their soul. Who doesn't want to be with someone who sees their soul? Five years from now, you keep getting better and better and better. Where do you want to be with this? How are people going to find you? What, 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 wanna, are you going to be doing this I, on stages? Yes, I want to do it on a grand scale. I mean, stages is an old school term. The new world is going to be many different types of platforms. I don't know if we're going to be in front of stages in a long time. So you don't want to be a performer anymore? Oh, well, I love performing, and I don't know if I'll. Can, I don't know if I'll do that. Can, I, I still make videos on Instagram now. Thomas, please hold on. People I'm, I'm, love Thomas, it. I'm sorry. Please hold on. The connection is so bad that even now it's not yeah. syncing up. So wait one sec. Yeah. So in five years from now, dude, I want to be doing this on a grand scale. I've always my mission has always been to reach a large audience. When I started stand-up comedy, I said, oh, this is how they're going to know me so I can be there when they need me to be one of the leaders of the new world through comedy. Oh, that everything I've done since, the, since I was a kid in the 90s has been leading up to this point. It's been like my – it's almost been like my life's work. And then when I started comedy, I was like, oh, that's how I'll get known. But then 14 years later, I'm like – minutely not you know i'm not in comedy if you're a comedy fan but like i'm not famous so i was like what the hell and then i started i was like i started doing this and then the quarantine happened and now people are boom 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 right. and now i'm like oh this is how it works it's through my comedy and through my clairvoyancy all together i want to be doing this i want to be helping people on a large scale so you're kind of like Steve Martin in a way where he stopped doing stand-up comedy and is now helping people on a large scale through his master classes. But for you, it's clairvoyancy. Yeah. Thomas. I can, I can, I could sign on to that. Good. Um, uh, uh, for those of you guys at home, for those of you listening without video, I guess who, who gives a shit, right? But, uh, as you know, Tyso is a big, uh, uh, video platform. And for those of you watching, thank you for your patience. I'm working real hard with trying to get the best quality and the best stuff. Um, I'll see if I'm able to get this footage all compiled together from different cameras that we have. Uh, maybe this isn't even necessary for keeping in, but I just wanted to acknowledge and just this last moment with Thomas, with you talking, it's just, I'm not getting, I'm probably, I'm probably getting in the way more being annoying and talking more about it. It's just really upsetting me. And you're one of my favorite guests to have on. And I want to just capture it as honestly as we can. So thank you for your patience uh, with this. And, and, watch the, 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 I put a link in the description, but watch the first episode that Thomas and I did, um, hit him up. Uh, we'll put up his Instagram handle again, put, uh, hit him up. If you want to,
talk to him about this kind of stuff. But Thomas, I, I want to say to you, I know you know this already, but to the people watching, in case they haven't seen our first episode together, whether you stop stand-up entirely or you don't prioritize it or you don't go back to it for a while, you're one of the funniest stand-up comics I've ever seen. So I just I want the audience to know that. And for whatever reason, uh, you could check out his Comedy Central. Um, uh, I guess it's a special. I'll put the link. There's a, it's online, right? Yeah, the- it's this is not happening. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. I, I put a, a clip of it in the last episode, but I'll also put a link to it here so you could check that out. Because Thomas, you're one of the funniest people I know. So if you don't stick Thank with you. it with stand up, even though watching your readings, it's a, you got a fun energy about it. So yeah. <laughs> um, I I I, uh, I I hate. I'm not going to talk about it again, especially because we're ending. But I, I hate this lag. It makes me miss you even more not being able to have the full thing that we have. So I really hope this came together right. okay as, as an episode. Uh, I love the reading with, you did with Betty. And um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, dude. I mean, listen, don't worry about the leg. I, I bet you there'll be a solid hour of fucking good shit. You got this. Don't worry about it. It's all good. We're alive. We're healthy. We can breathe. That's all that matters, baby. Love you, Thomas. All right, love you. All right, man. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you probably right after we hang up when we try to figure out how you could get me four of these pieces of footage with your Dropbox not working. <laughs> talk to you soon, bud. Scoot doo. Bye. Blabbery blue. Scoop D. Oh, there you go. All right. Oh, do you think I hurt my back? Would I know if I hurt my back? <laughs> I would know. Oh, yeah! <laughs> 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 <laughs>